Shalom, who praises see how what Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Ha Rakak Wadash, double honors unto the apostles and elders of great Milson who rule well, and Shalom to the whole four let. This is Payal of the GMS London camp, and this is a biblical commentary of the book of Luke, the seventh chapter, and it reads Now, when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum. And a certain centurion servant who was there unto him was sick and ready to die. All right, so that shows you that. The servant was held in some form of reverence to the centurion, okay? Um, and, and he sought, so much so that he sought Yahweh Shai. Obviously, of hearing all of the things Yahweh Shai had done, the fact that he, the reason why he sought Yahweh Shai is because he had faith and belief. In that Yahweh Shai would be able to heal his servant that was sick and ready to die. All right. So this is verse three. And when he had heard of Yahweh Shai, he went. He sent unto him the elders of the Jews. All right, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. His servant. All right. And that shows you had some pulling power as well because he sent the the elders of the Jews on his behalf. And obviously that doing something like that would, would vouch for. That centurion's character, all right. That he, that the the elders of the Jews would actually do something so favorable for him, all right. Verse four, and when they came to Yahweh Shai, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this, all right. Hence, why they went there, all right, because their their words held weight, all right. They were elders, you know. You you to reverence men, the men with the gray hair. Okay, because they have the experience being tried and tested, and then they would sit in that that hierarchy of the elderhood, right? And remember, there would there would be many elderly people of that generation, but then there would only be a set amount of people that would be appointed the elders of the Jews because their their wisdom would be re revered. Okay, verse four, and when they came to Yahweh Shai, they besought him instantly, saying. That he was worthy of whom he should do this, for he loveth our nation, and he hath built us a synagogue. All right, so that show a show of faith. That was a show of his faith, of his works. Right, that was how they they uh, qualified that he was worthy. All right, then Yahweh went with them, and when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to to him, saying unto him, Lord. Trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy. Man, this 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 makes me feel the way, man. <sighs> he said, For I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof. Alright? So he said the, the Imagine he, he he had so much pulling power to the to the to the strength that he could get the elders to come bring him to his house. But then when he came there you know, the centurion felt within himself that man, I'm, I ain't worthy for you to come in my house, man. He, he told his friends to go forth and, and send him. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. All right. And that even shows his faith even more that all he he understood that look, man, well he believed that look, all you gotta say is the word, and it's good. All right, verse eight. For I also am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers, and I say unto one, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh, and to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. When Yahweh heard these things, he marveled at him and turned him about. All right, let me even delve into verse eight before I move on. So he, he basically said, Look, he a centurion is a rank of you know under the Roman rulership. As you did, the word centurion comes from the word century, <laughs> excuse me, which basically means a hundred, all right, because the centurion would have been the 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 leader of a hundred, basically, all right, so he would have had a hundred men under him, and that's why he said, for I also am a man set under authority of it, okay, so he, he he's under the authority of someone, and then he says, having under me soldiers, and I say unto one, go, and he goeth. And to another come and he cometh. And to my servant do this and he doeth it. Alright? So he understood that he had a power even though it was underneath his, 
underneath an authority, but he had a power and he knew that if he said, look, do this to, to his soldier or his servant, he'll do it basically, all right? And in saying that, he understood that Yahweh Shai had authority in the spiritual realm, all right? Over the, the fourth dimension in the spiritual sense. So he understood that, look, he could cast off that demon of illness whereby his servant was near unto death by just the command of, the, of his words, basically. Verse 9, When Yahweh heard these things, he marveled at him and turned him about and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. All right? So he, he said this man's faith was great, all right? that there was no other man, there was no one else that had such a great faith as him. All right? Verse 10, and they that were sent, returning to the house, found the servant. Whole that he had been sick, all right. So he he was restored to to his to health basically, and it came to pass the day after that he went into a, a city called Nain, or um, Nain, um, and many of his disciples went with him and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. Oh, man, that's crazy. And um, much people of the city was with her, all right? And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, weep not. And he came and touched the, the beer. And they that bare him stood still, and he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. All right? And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. All right? So, let me read um, verse 14 again. So it says, And he came and touched the beer, which the beer, I believe, is the the instrument that was being used to carry the young man, all right? Uh, but look it up just to confirm. Um, and they that bear him stood still, all right? So they come to a halt. And it says, and he said, young man, I say unto thee, arise, all right? So the Lord spoke the word, all right, to make the man arise, okay? And you can also take this this miracle in the sense of the men, the, the valley of dry bones, all right? When um, basically Ezekiel was told to prophesy unto the wind, and and basically there was um a coming together of the if I'm if if I'm if I'm getting the the events correct, where basically he said, look man, um you know, he was told by the Lord prophesy unto the wind, and when he prophesied, the bones came together, the sinews, etc., etc. That's the same, that's the spirit of the Lord, all right? The spirit is a spirit that quickeneth um, the flesh profit of nothing, all right? The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and life, all right? So basically, this man gained life by way of the word, all right? Because it also tells you in Proverbs 21 and 16, he that walketh out the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So this, this miracle in itself is a great show of not only Yahweh Shai's authority in the earth when he was walking, but also as a um as a as an example or a, um an allegory for for us in the faith today, all right? Because we were that young man, all right. Of um that was basically dead, but the Lord spoke his, these words, young man. I say unto thee, arise, all right? And then we woke up, verse fifteen. And he that was dead sat up. And began to speak, all right, and that's what happened to us when we we when we heard the word of the Lord for us to arise, we answered to his calling, and we began to be, began to speak as well, okay, we stood in that room of a prophet, all right, and we became we 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 started to began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother, all right, and there came a fear on all. And they glorified Yahweh, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us, and that Yahweh have visited his people. All right, and that really shows you the fulfilling of um, Isaiah the seventh chapter, which um, 
you know, was reiterated in the book of Matthew, the first chapter, about when Mary bared um, Yahweh Shai, that the prophecy of um, Emmanuel, um, basically Emmanuel, um, being, God being with us, all right, Emmanuel, that um, that basically is Yahweh Shai, all right? And that's why I said God had visited his people, because through Yahweh Shai coming down, he basically joined us back onto the Heavenly Father. And it says, and this rumor of him went through, went forth throughout all Judea and throughout all the region round about. And the disciples of John showed him of all these things. And John calling unto him two of his disciples sent them to Yahweh saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? When the men come, were come unto him, they said, John the Baptist have sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come or look we for another and it came and that came uh and in that same hour he cured many of the infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits and unto many that were blind he gave sight then yahweh answered and said unto them go your way and tell john what things ye have seen and heard how that the blind see the lame walk and the lepers are cleansed the deaf hear and the dead are raised to the poor the gospel is preached, and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And when the messengers of John were departed, he began to speak unto the people concerning John. All right. So even when Yahweh sent John the Baptist men away, he didn't actually say, I am him, but he said the acts that he's done. All right. And in saying that, he is saying that he he is him. John would John would, yeah, you know John the Baptist would understand what was being said, all right. And that's why, after he said all those things, he said this in verse twenty three because it shows you, the thing of this about all about this thing of ours. It's all about faith because he said the acts he does. He said, look, tell John that this is being done done the exit, like, you know, um, you know. Um, the blind see, the the, um, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor, uh, to to the poor the gospel is preached, and then this is how he, he closes it all. It says, and blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me, right? Because ultimately, those that are not offended in Yahweh Shai are basically um, those who um, you know have faith in him basically and when the messengers of john were departed he began to speak unto the people concerning john what went ye out into the wilderness for to see a reed shaken with the wind but what went ye out for to see a man clothed in soft raiment all right they didn't go out to see those things obviously behold they which are uh, gorgeously paroled and live delicately are in the king's courts but what went ye out to see? A prophet, yea, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet, a rat, in John the Baptist. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. For I say unto you, among uh, those that are born of women, there is not a great, greater prophet than John the Baptist, but he that is lost at least in the kingdom of Yahweh is greater than him right so there's no there's no a great there's no greater prophet than John the Baptist but the least in the kingdom is going to be greater than him okay and all the people that heard him and the publicans justified Yahweh being baptized with the baptism of John but the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the counsel of uh, Yahweh against themselves being not baptized of him right and obviously they were cut by John the Baptist when he took the when he said that uh when he told them bring ye um meats um worthy of um repentance basically and the Lord said whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation and to what are they like? They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace and calling one to another and saying we have packed unto you and ye have not danced we have mourned to you, and you have not wept. And John the Baptist came, neither eating nor drinking, nor drinking. And ye say, he have a devil. The son of man is come eating 
and drinking, and ye say, Behold, a gluttonous man and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners, but wisdom is justified of all her children. All right? So it says, And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him, and he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Yahweh sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment. All right, so she found out where Yahweh was, and this woman being a sinner, she brought an alabaster box of ointment. All right, which I believe is 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 uh, scented oils. All right, verse thirty-eight, and stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head. And kissed his feet and anointed them with the with the anointment with the ointment. Sorry. Now, when the Pharisee, which had bidden him, saw it, he spake within himself, saying, "This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner." All right. And Yahweh answered and said unto him, "Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee." And he saith, "Master, say on." There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. Uh, the one owed 500 pence, the other 50, right? So 500 pence and one owed 50 pence, all right? And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me... It's luckier. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him the most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he... To whom he forgave most, and he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. Verse forty four. And he turned to say to the woman and said to Simon unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house, thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she have washed my feet with tears, and wiped them with the hairs of my of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in have not ceased to kiss my feet, all right? And that show, and this, this is this shows you that they were both in debt, all right? They both had debt hanging over their heads, all right? But because he didn't, because Simon, um, this Pharisee, wasn't indebted as as heavily as his woman was, he didn't feel the need to to kiss the son, lest he be angry, as as a vermin. Vehemently, as the woman did, all right, because that's that's the thing. You ultimately, you know, the, what she did was a show of her faith, all right, and a show of that she understood how how um how much she effed up, all right, to to, to put it plainly, and that she um seeked to redeem herself. You know, aggressively, basically, all right. You know, and the the most, my head with uh, she has. Uh, let me read verse forty five again. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in have not ceased to kiss my feet, my feet, my head with oil, and did this not anoint, but this woman have anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little was forgiven, the same love of little. All right? So, that's the, that's the, that's the, uh, what's that word? Um, That's the, man, uh, not pendulum, the spectrum, that's it. If, you know, that's the, if, 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 if you, you know, if you've been forgiven little, you're going to love little. If you've been give, for, forgiven a lot, you're going to love a lot, all right? And he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at the meat with him began to say within themselves, who is he, this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, thy faith have saved thee, go in peace, all right? And that's why it went over their head, all right? Because um, basically they, they little was forgiven, so they they loved little, but they didn't see they 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 understood that he was the Lord, but they they didn't understand to what extent he was the Lord. All right, I actually I wouldn't say 
that much that they knew he was the Lord. But what I will say is that, you know, they knew he was a man of some, you know, some rank, all right? Because he said, because Simon said with himself, if this man was a prophet, he wouldn't let um this woman, you know, do all these things. But this woman knew who Yahushai was. So that's why she was going so hard. And that's why they weren't going as hard as her, all right? But anyway, with that, 